this is my first neurology video um, again I'm gonna be making a couple of videos on biopsych and brain related concepts uh, in order to help uh, students that are studying in college or uh, in the comfort of their homes so these videos are free so if you feel like watching them if you think this is a good deal then go ahead and enjoy the videos uh, for anyone that's really curious on learning these are the videos for you uh, in this video I'm gonna be talking about the nervous system uh, again th these videos this is a series of about uh, a couple of maybe hundreds of videos that I'm making so uh, we're gonna be getting into medical applications and future videos and things like that talking about different diseases and how they can be cured and the medications to use and things like that but before going that deep and before really understanding those things it's important to start in, at the basics and this is where the nervous system comes in and you really have to understand how the nervous system is uh, composed of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system and to understand the two different divisions uh, in deep details. When we talk about the central nervous system we're often referring to the brain and the spinal cord and these two organs come together in order to uh, help us uh, interpret information for us to perceive things and again the brain is called the, the master commander uh, for a reason because it's really important for interpreting different uh, information that we encounter throughout the day. And when we talk about the peripheral nervous system, we're often referring to nerve fibers that extend from the spinal cord and branch out in various parts of the body uh, in order for us to uh, be able to transmit different signals from the outside world uh, to the brain. So let's start with the central nervous system and let's kind of uh, understand uh, the, the things that really come to play when we talk about the central nervous system. When we talk about the central nervous system, we're often ta thinking about afferent and efferent nerve signals. Uh, afferent nerve signals are those that come from uh, receptors in various parts of the body and travel down to the spinal cord and then eventually uh, are relayed to the brain in order for the brain to pick up information about our outside environment. So once again, when we're thinking of afferent, we're often thinking about, for instance, someone coming in, touching someone else, uh, before that person can be aware of their environment and that they've been touched information really had to travel down and this happens quick however information had to travel uh, through the spinal cord and to the brain in order for that uh, person to be aware that he's been touched or to feel that sensation uh, afferent signals are really important for people to understand to get get information about their environments and to understand uh, the situation that they're in and it's very important for daily uh, activity and uh, afferent signals are very different from efferent signals because uh, efferent signals often refer to signals that uh, come from the brain, travel down the spinal cord, and are used and then you know in order to produce movement. However, one word I want to talk about before we get into efferent is the word stimulus because it all starts with stimulus when we talk about afferent. A stimulus can be a touch, can be uh, a sound. It's really the word refers to anything that activates a receptor in order for uh, the brain to be uh, aware of that, uh, you know, whatever that sound or whatever that touch is. So when we talk about sound, touch, uh, uh, you know, light, anything that really interacts with, you know, whether the light is interacting with eye receptors, the sound is interacting with ear receptors, the touch is interacting with skin receptors, that that is a stimulus. So that is a really important term to understand uh, when we're talking about these different uh, n uh, nerves that are being uh, that are carrying it, that information to the brain or from the brain. When we talk about efferent, back to efferent now. We're talking about information that is traveling from the brain to the spinal cord and out to various parts of the body in order to cause movement or in order to uh, whatever carry out anything that we desire such as uh, you know if you want to go out to jog if you want to talk if you want to open your eyes before you can do those 
the brain had to command various parts of the body in order for that action uh, to take place and the brain does this via efferent signals uh, that uh, uh, occur again this is the, the uh, these signals occur in the forms of action potentials right these electrical uh, messages are sent in in various neurons of the of the brain these brain cells and before these efferent signals can really occur one thing I want to talk about is that this information goes from the brain down to the spinal cord in order for us to produce, uh, for example, movement. Uh, but this information is relayed by a, a brain uh, structure in the hind brain called the pons. And the pons is located in the regions of the cerebellum and the medulla, as you, as you should know. But let's, let's go back to uh, the, this, uh, this word stimulus here. I want to make sure that it's clear. When students talk about stimulus, they often make the mistake to confuse it with stimuli. And let's clear that misunderstanding. Stimulus is referring to the singular form of the word. And stimuli <coughs> is referring to the plural version of that word. And once you kind of understand this, you, you won't make the mistake to write stimuli when, we're t when you're talking about one, right? So it's, un it's un uh, very important to get the distinction between the two. Uh, moving on to the peripheral nervous system now. The peripheral nervous system is the autonomic division of the nervous system. And this is composed of sympathetic and parasympathetic. And again, these are the two subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system. And when we talk about the sympathetic nervous system, we're talking about the, por the portion of the nervous system that is responsible for mobilizing energy when it comes to threatening situations, when it comes to various challenges that we encounter throughout the day, finding the energy in the body in order to overcome various threats that we encounter. So the sympathetic nervous system is really responsible for different hormones and, and the neurotransmitters that are released when we encounter situations that really require our attention and that really are, are alarming to us. So for instance, you might have dopamine released, uh, norepinephrine released, uh, the release of epinephrine, you might have the release of the uh, hormone uh, cortisol, you might have different uh, body proteins that are released uh, as a result of sympathetic activation and uh, again uh, when when these hormones are released you tend to get increased blood pressure for instance uh, increased heart activity such as uh, increased breathing rate increased uh, heart rate uh, and different things for instance uh, blood sugar levels might even spike up as more glucose is being broken down and things like that so the sympathetic nervous system uh, makes sure that energy is ready and available when we encounter situations that demand our attention, that really require us to have energy in order to escape these situations. And so that is a very important uh, division of the brain right there. When we talk about the parasympathetic nervous system, we're talking about that division of the brain that is responsible for calming everything back to normal, right? So everything that was disturbed by the sympathetic nervous system has to be uh, brought back to regular, and often we use the term homeostasis in order to refer to uh, everything back to normal given regular conditions. Uh, brain uh, functions are back to the way they should be. Uh, so when we're talking about, for example, blood pressure, if blood pressure had gone up to, let's see, 140 over uh, 91, for instance, which is, which is actually really high, then blood pressure has to be brought back down by the parasympathetic nervous system to rates of about 120 over 80 and things like that. And same goes for uh, blood sugar levels that had been spiked up. Parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for restoring everything back to uh, regular state. So as you can see, uh, we've talked about the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system. Uh, before diving deep into medical concept, it's, a, it's a really important to understand uh, that these two uh, subdivisions of the brain are really important uh, for uh, making sure that uh, the body is able to really function the way it should given various situations. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned one or two things from these videos. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.